Next theorem. This theorem is very important. This theorem says any integer larger than one is divisible by a prime number. Any integer like n, which is larger than one, is divisible by a prime number. Okay, let us begin the proof. Any integer. So that integer can be prime or it can be composite, am I right? Any integer like n larger than one can be prime or it can be composite. So if it's prime, if n is prime, then it divides itself. So there is nothing to prove. This is the very first scenario. If n is a prime number, then it divides itself as a factor of itself. So there's nothing to prove. However, if it's composite, you have the following scenarios. If n is composite, then by definition, n can be written as the multiplication of two integers like r sub zero, s sub zero, such that r sub zero is bounded between one and n, and s sub zero is bounded between one and n. This is how we define a composite number. Okay. What's the scenario then? N is R sub zero times S sub zero. This means that N equals to R sub zero S sub zero means that R sub zero divides N and also S sub zero divides N. If one of them is prime, then we're done. R sub zero or S sub zero is prime, then we're done. We try to show that any integer is divisible by prime number. Then we are done. If not, if none of R sub zero and S sub zero are prime numbers, then they are also composite. So what's the meaning of that? It means that R sub zero can be written as R sub one, S sub one, R sub one is bounded between one and R sub zero and S sub one is bounded between one and R sub zero. Okay, so what's the meaning of that? So R sub one divides R sub zero and by transitive property, since R sub zero divides N, then R sub one divides N. S one divides R sub zero. Since R sub zero divides N, then S one divides N as well. Again, if either R one, S one, are prime numbers, then we're done. 
we found a prime factor. Either R sub one or S sub one. R prime. Then we are done. If not, we have to continue this process. None of R sub one or S sub one are prime, then we have to continue this process. This process until we can break them down into prime numbers. So in this process, you can write it this way. You can find R sub zero, R sub one, R sub two, up to R sub K. And one of them is eventually is going to be a prime number. So here you have one, which is less than some numbers, just finite of them, RK, RK minus one, R2, R1, and less than R0, which is less than N, and each R sub I divides N, and eventually one of these R sub I's is going to be a prime number. One of our i is prime. So we eventually can find a prime number that divides n. This is the process. We have to start by checking to see if n as the integer is prime. If it's prime, then you're done. There is nothing to prove. You stop here. But if n is not prime, if it's composite, then if you can find one of the prime factors, you're done. If none of these two numbers are prime numbers, they are composite. It means that they need to be broken down into smaller pieces to a prime numbers. If you cannot find that prime number at those steps, you have to continue this k times. You need to repeat this process, go all over again, k times, so eventually you can break down these factors into a prime number. That prime number eventually divides the integer larger than one. 